All right, well, good afternoon, Rotary leaders. How is everybody doing today? Oh, come on now. That was weak and slightly unacceptable. Here we are at the 2019 Rotary Leadership Summit, areas 30, zones 33 and 34, representing over 1,750 clubs, 31 districts. So I want to hear it loud and proud for all the high performing leaders here. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Outstanding, much better. Chaotic, dynamic, complex, a lot of different variables. Absolutely, but effective. Efficient, not always. What did you notice in that video? What are some, what are some traits, some key things you pulled out of that? This would be the audience participation part. <laughs> Communication, okay, what else? What was that? Repetition, training. What about autonomy? Autonomous decision-making. Anytime in that video, that flight lead, who was the video you were lit, that uh, image you were looking at, did you at one time hear him call back to headquarters and say, hey, here's the situation, guys. Um, can we schedule a conference call and let's talk about this and see what the best decision might be or course of action? <laughs> All right, let's plan a meeting to have another meeting so we can talk about this and come up with the best course or solution. No. You don't have that ability. And guess what? When he went out that day, I guarantee you he had no idea where he would be at, what situation he would be in that day. But he's trusted to execute decentralized at a very autonomous level. And again, think about it in your organizations. Do we hold ourselves accountable? How do we actually do this? Because Harvard Business Review did a study and they said in mediocre or in poor performing teams, there's no accountability. In mediocre teams, bosses drive accountability. But in high performing teams, colleagues and peers handle their own accountability and their own performance problems. So now you're asking, well, great, Brandon, how do we do that? How can you do that? Well, as leaders, where does any kind of culture change or shift start? At the top, right? A lot of people in this room. So do we always hold ourselves accountable? Are we holding ourselves accountable? Do we admit when we're wrong? Are we listening to those lower level emerging leaders or younger people that are coming into Rotary that have better ideas sometimes? Because if they see you holding yourselves accountable, then guess what? They're gonna hold themselves accountable and they're gonna hold each other accountable. And all because of what? Human factors. How many human errors did you observe in those, observe in those three clips? How many times could that have been prevented? So is everybody ready to go to the airport and uh, jump on their plane uh, back home or next trip? No, why do we show you that? Why do I show you that? Because I think it's a phenomenal example of how human error and human factor can seep in. And even as you look back at now 2020, there are numerous ways we could have stopped that from happening. Numerous ways you could have slowed down the operation. Numerous ways we could have put a check and balance in there, which we have in our systems now, checklist, how we run our cockpits, our training, to pull that out. And I tell you that because in aviation safety, we came up with this idea, the Swiss cheese model, they call it. And why do they call that? Because imagine all a bunch of pieces of Swiss cheese lined up, right? All random holes in them. And each of those holes represent a human error. So in any given sortie, any given day, anywhere around the world, any kind of airplane, any kind of pilot, no matter the experience level, there's Swiss cheeses laid out. And there's typically one or two or maybe more errors that happen. But rarely do those ever line up. But the problem is when they do line up, guess what? Mishap or investigation. Now, how does this apply to you? Why do I tell you all this? Because as you look at those human errors, like we said, you see that in your world, in your environment. How do those affect you? 